Whether you own a firearm for self-protection, for hunting, or just plinking in the dirt, at the end of the day, we're all interested in what happens when that bullet hits its final destination. And what better place to discuss bullet performance than at the skinning shed? In the course of the past week, our little group in South Africa has shot a bunch of different animals. And it's always good to see what happens in the real world in terms of performance versus what happens in gel. And the bullet that's been picking up the biggest bulk of the kills while we've been here has been the 130 grain E-tip from Nosler. Now, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of monometal bullets. And the reason being that they have very, very consistent performance at both ends of the velocity spectrum. What that means is you can shoot them out of an SBR at close range and still get the same sort of performance as you do shooting it out of a long barreled rifle at long range. For example, take a look at these two. That is a 130 grain E-tip that was shot through both shoulders of a zebra at about 300 yards. And as you can see, it's got classic mushroom performance. On the other hand, this little fellow was shot through a Niala I shot this guy facing me, it entered through the chest, blew the heart to smithereens, and found the bullet somewhere back here. That shot at around about 3,000 feet per second on impact, and that one would hit at around about 2,500 feet per second. Now, as you can see, in terms of performance, they both retained at just about 100% of weight, the only difference being that this one, the pedals have folded back a little bit further. Now, the other supposed benefits of monometal bullets, I'm kind of dubious about. For example, the whole lead fragments in meat thing, I think is completely overblown. And the, especially the whole protecting wildlife from ingesting lead fragments in the gut pile. For the last 10 years, California has been lead free in terms of hunting ammunition and the condor population has not varied one iota. So I think the sources of lead is, are probably coming from some other direction. What again, what I like about monometal bullets is consistency and performance. You're not going to get that explosive fragmentation that you get from lead bullets. However, you do get the ability to punch through both shoulders, break bone, and probably leave two blood trails. The other bullets we've been using have been in 9.3 by 62, which I know is an odd caliber for the majority of American users. However, we switched out the barrels on our Strasser RS-14 rifles and went from shooting 270s for planes game all the way up to 9.3 by 62 for Buffalo. Now that buffalo hunt was perhaps one of the most exciting things that I've ever done. And to see the bullet performance on that animal is really eye-opening. For example, I made two really good strong shoulder hits on a buffalo that normally on any other animal would have been lights out like that. However, it soaked it up and I had to put a third shot through the hip using this little fella. Now that's a 286 grain solid, which is a brass projectile turned on a CNC uh, machine and is extremely consistent and extremely hard. This impacted my Cape Buffalo somewhere in the hip and we have it on video. This bullet traveled the entire length of the animal, exited somewhere in the shoulder, hit the dirt, threw up a dust plume and continued down through the ulu. So if you want penetration, this is the way to go. I'm not sure really what the application would be in the US apart from hunting, say, a grizzly or if you wanted to stop a Mack truck. But there it is. At 100 yards, you're still getting about 3,000 foot-pounds of energy on target and massive, massive penetration. The other bullet we shot out here was a 250 grain Acubond, again in 9.3 by 62. Acubonds, what can I say? They have great terminal performance, they're pretty sleek, and they have the plastic tip in order to initiate expansion as well. We've had no complaints with any of these bullets whatsoever. In terms of accuracy, the 270 is grouped around about an inch and a quarter at 100 yards out of three different rifles. And uh, we've never had a group bigger than an inch and a quarter, which is pretty strong performance across the board. Looking at the ballistics on the box, it leaves the barrel at about 3,050 feet per second. And as a reloader, I know I can boost that performance up by about 200 feet per second using powders like Reloader 26 and Superformance. Of course, as an ammunition manufacturer, you can't just tailor loads for one specific rifle. You have to have great performance across a whole range. So dialing back that velocity makes a little bit of sense. So if you're looking for two bullets and two rounds that will pretty much kill anything on the planet, apart from the super big stuff, then 9.3 by 62, 270 Winchester from Nosler. I got no complaints.